Hi guys, um, we are moving on in chapter three to reliable data transfer or basically mechanisms that will slowly develop behind TCP. So this is sort of a gentle introduction into TCP step by step and this, is, this will also be part of your uh, next programming assignment. So fun. All right. So I went over this slide when I talked about UDT um, it basically describes all the different services that are that can be provided by uh, transport layer protocols. So what we have here is clients and server processes communicating over the network and then the application layer sends messages to the transport layer which then delivers them through end-to-end -end, um, on end-to-end -to -end basis by providing the socket interface. Okay, so sockets do multiplexing and demultiplexing, meaning that you can send um, data from different flows over the same network channel. And then when those packets arrive, the operating system can kind of um, separate them out to send the appropriate data to the appropriate um, uh, receiver uh, to different sockets, even though all the packets are arriving over the same network card. All right, we also talked about segmentation and reassembly, error checking, uh, that's provided by UDP. And now in TCP, we'll have the additional mechanisms of uh, reliability, though it's not foolproof, there is a lot of reliability that TCP provides. Um, in order delivery, meaning that if you send packets in order one, two, three, they will, uh, if you send messages in, or, in order one, two, three, those messages will arrive at the application layer on the receiver in order one, two, three. Um, and TCP will also provide mechanisms for congestion control, uh, meaning that the sender will not send more data that can be carried by the network, and also flow control, meaning that the sender will not send more data that can be processed by the receiver. So um, let's see how those different mechanisms are being built in. We'll start with uh, reliability. But first, let me kind of separate um, the abstraction that is provided to the application layer and what is provided to the transport layer by the network, okay? So, what we want to provide to the application layer is this idea of a reliable channel. So, the sending process on the application layer sends some data, that data traverses the network over a reliable channel, arrives at the receiver, and the receiver gets exactly the data that the transmitter sent. That's the view of the world that we want the application layer to have, right? We're providing this kind of illusion, if you will, um, of a perfect network that connects everybody at, you know, in a, in a quick, reliable way. What happens in practice, though, is that the network layer is actually not reliable. Um, packets can be lost, packets can be reordered, um, packets can be duplicated in the network as well. There's all kinds of failures that can happen. And so, um, in spite of there being this unreliable channel, we want to provide an interface using the transport layer so that from the application layer's point of view, the network looks like this, basically like a reliable channel, okay? So how does that happen? Well, the application sending process still sends some data to the transport layer. And the interface provided to that is reliable data transfer sent. Okay, so this is kind of like you're sending data to a socket, except we'll have a separate call uh, to differentiate the reliable data transfer from the unreliable data transfer. Okay, so sending process calls RDT send with some data. Um, and then there is something that the transport layer does, this reliable data transfer protocol on the sending side, to take the data and divide it into packets. And now those packets can be transmitted over the network by passing them into unreliable data transfer sent. Okay, so through this function, we can invoke the network layer to do the actual transmission. Now, hopefully, those packets get to the end, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but whenever something does get to the other end, um, the network layer calls RDT receive or reliable data transfer receive um, and passes whatever packet came in and that invokes the receiver side reliable, reliable data transfer protocol, 
Okay? And if things are arriving in order, maybe there's some magic that can be done here um, to make things reliable, eventually this protocol decides that it's safe to deliver data to the application process and then calls deliver data which uh, with the data that's being pulled from the packets, which then invokes the receiving process to process um, uh, the data that's coming in. Okay, so the magic happens in these protocols on the sending and receiver side. Okay. And the more the unreliable, the more unreliable this network channel is, the more complexity we will need to introduce into the transport layer to deal with that unreliability or to recover from it. Okay. So what are some ways in which this channel can be unreliable? Well, one thing that could happen is that those packets could simply be lost. Um, packets either arrive or they don't arrive. And so when they don't arrive, well, there's something that has to get done to get a retransmission to happen or whatever so that all the data arrives. And then when data arrived in order, we can then start delivering it to the receiver process. Okay? Or when the missing data has arrived, we can then fill in the gaps and start delivering data to the receiver process. Okay? Um, the channel could also corrupt packets. It's possible. Right? So packets do arrive, but they arrive mangled. And so maybe we need to check their integrity. This is what UDP does. They, the unreliable channel could lose packets and or corrupt them. So now you have two issues that you have to deal with, um, right? So issues can compound. Another issue that can happen is packets could arrive out of order. So they all get there. They just need to be reordered back to, um, so for example, if you're sending a message with an array and that array gets divided into packets and they arrive out of order, well, now you're flipping rows in the array. Okay, so that's bad. So the, so the transfer protocol needs to order the, uh, reorder the arriving packets such that they recreate data in order and you get all the rows in order as they were sent by the um, application layer sender. Okay, so we have loss, we have corruption, we have out of order. Um, we can have duplicate packets in the network. Um, I guess that's it. I might be missing something. I'm a little afraid, but I think that's it. <laughs> so let's see then um, how we can deal with those uh, with those situations. Okay. So we're going to need to design a protocol, and the basic protocol, um, the most basic protocol, can be seen here. We have Bruce Lee, who is running the protocol of getting a ball and then sending the ball back. Right. I mean, you guys have all seen this legendary, totally true uh, video of Bruce Lee. So if you kind of treat Bruce Lee as a protocol, okay, we can describe it as something like this using state transition uh, diagrams. Okay? And state transitions or finite state machines um, are a great way of reasoning about protocols and in fact implementing them. If you try to implement a protocol without first defining a finite state machine, good luck. You will be hopelessly lost, your code is not gonna run guaranteed. So all the network protocols um, are really defined in terms of finite state machines where each state corresponds to a particular set of conditions and then you can move to another state if a certain other set of conditions is satisfied. All right, let's try to break this down. So what we have here is a state where Bruce Lee waits for the ball. Okay? Now, out of that state, you could have a transition, and we'll add one transition here, where if there is a board, if the ball is in court, okay, so we have a ball, it in court returns true, okay, so this condition triggers this state transition, okay, so if this is true, then the action taken by the protocol will be to send the ball back. So only when this condition is met, this state is triggered, this is the action that happens, and then we're back to waiting for the ball. Okay, super simple. So in the process, in the context of um, this abstraction, we need to provide 
the sending process, we need to provide, sorry, the, uh, the reliable data transfer protocol on the sending side and the reliable data protocol on the receiver side to achieve re reliable delivery of data. Okay. Um, and so here's our, um, uh, here's the, the picture again. It's covered here by probably my picture um, as I'm recording the lecture, but um, that's okay. You guys can kind of see the slides as I post them on D2L. So let's assume that we have, um, we'll define RDT, Reliable Data Transfer 1.0, which in fact uses a reliable channel. So we don't have to do much here. This channel is reliable, um, but we still need to define this protocol somehow. So on the sender, we're going to wait for um, a call from the application. So when the application calls RDT sends, it passes some data. Okay. What this protocol will then do is take the data, make a packet from it. We'll assume that the data neatly fits into one packet. Great. Um, and then we'll have a packet and then we're going to pass that packet into UDT send to be transferred over the network. Okay, great. So now what happens on the receiver? The receiver waits for RDT receive to be called. Okay, then it can um, take the packet that has arrived, extract the data. Okay, and now take the data and call deliver data to pass this to the application layer. All right, so this is great, this is a perfectly good protocol, but it relies on the fact that there are no bit errors, no packet loss, and no reordering, right? So next question is, is what do we do when there are errors on the channel, okay? So if a packet arrives and there's an error, we can detect it with a checksum, and we already went over this mechanism when discussing UDP, okay? So Instead of make packet with data, we're going to make packet, okay, with a checksum, okay, with data and a checksum for the data. And then the receiver can also use this corrupt receive packet to basically get a true or false if the packet was, has been corrupted in the network, okay? So now we need to design a protocol here that if the packet is corrupt, we will get a retransmission from uh, the sender. So it's actually pretty nice because you can think of these types of protocols um, as or you can realize that you already use these types of protocols in common speech, right? So if I'm talking to you and let's say in a live lecture or in a conversation, I could say something without enunciating it or saying it too quietly Either way, you, you may not be able to, deco to decode a particular word that I'm saying. What would you do then? You would say, excuse me, could you repeat it, right? Um, you would give me some signal that uh, you have not received the information, okay? This is called a negative acknowledgement or a knack. On the other hand, if we're speaking maybe over the phone and I'm just going on and on about something that you're listening to, you will then give me positive acknowledgements or acts that tell me that you are receiving the data. And these are signals such as, mm-hmm, aha, uh -huh, okay, whatever, right? So those types of things are commonly used in human communications to keep a transmission going or to stop a transmission and request a retransmission of some data that has been, uh, let's say, corrupted because you didn't understand, maybe it was a noisy environment. Right? So in network protocols, we can use the same mechanisms. We can send an acknowledgement or send a negative acknowledgement, and then the sender can receive that packet, right? Because it's always a packet going back, going between senders and receivers, and then get a true or false to determine if the packet is an acknowledgement or if the packet is a negative acknowledgement. Okay. So your task, and this should take you like solid, 10 minutes, maybe, maybe longer, this is what we do normally in class, is to design the sender and receiver protocols um, or finite state machines for this RDT 2.0, which will deal with, uh, which will use these functions, make packet with checksum, corrupt, 
is, is NAC uh, to provide reliable communications, even though the underlying network uh, channel is unreliable. All right, so please pause the video here and uh, spend some time designing these uh, state machines. All right, when you are ready with your solutions, hopefully, um, you can then, uh, let's go over what these solutions should look like. All right, so we've got some extra arrows here, great. So we detect errors using checksums. Uh, we use AX and NAX, um, and here's what this protocol might look like. So on the sender, we still wait for the application coming, uh, for the data coming from the application layer. So RDT send is called. Now we're going to make a send packet, okay? based on the data coming in and a checksum of the data. Okay, great. And then we'll UDT send that packet over the network. All right. So that packet now arrives at the receiver and there are few options, two options actually that can happen. So RDT receive packet is called, okay? And the packet is either is corrupt or is not corrupt, okay? If it is not corrupted, we're going to extract the data, deliver the data to the application layer and send an acknowledgement. On the other hand, if the packet is corrupt, the action taken by the receiver will be to UDT send a negative acknowledgement. Okay, so let's see what happens back on the sender. So the sender sent the packet and now it is waiting on the network for an acknowledgement or a negative acknowledgement, right? And now, there's a choice here as well. We can transition this way or we can transition that way, right? So if we receive a packet and it is a negative acknowledgement, then we're going to retransmit the send packet by sending it to UDT send again, the same send packet we created here, okay? On the other hand, if while we're waiting for an acknowledgement or negative acknowledgement, we do receive an acknowledgement, that's mean that, the, that means that the packet has been received correctly here and delivered to um, the, uh, the application layer, then what happens is we will uh, receive, we'll be receiving the packet, which is an acknowledgement, and then this packet is an acknowledgement, great. And then the action uh, taken here is just a lambda, um, which basically means do nothing in kind of this notation, and then we're back to waiting for another packet to send um, when we're triggered by the application layer. All right, so um, that's, the, that's the idea. Um, that's how you can design these protocols. And then as we're adding more and more things that can happen at the um, sort of on the network channel, instead of just errors, but also other things that can, that can occur, these state diagrams will become more complicated, okay? Um, we can also describe this protocol as a stop and wait protocol, right? So we send one packet at a time, and then we wait for a response, either an ACK or an ACK, and then we send more packets, or the next packet. Now, as you can imagine, this is very inefficient. Ideally, we'd be able to send multiple packets at a time and wait for multiple acknowledgements, Ideally, we would be sending packets all the time and just receiving acknowledgements kind of as we're sending packets so that both the kind of sender to receiver network channel and the receiver to sender network channels are fully utilized um, instead of kind of sending, then waiting, sending, then waiting. Okay, so that's what TCP will end up doing as we kind of end up uh, building up the complexity and our understanding of the protocol. Um, so usually we stop here. This is kind of the first lecture on this topic. Um, the next thing we'll do, you guys can kind of um, think about it, is here's kind of the next set of challenges um, that we'll start getting uh, where X or NAX can be corrupted, okay? Um, and then what if there are duplicates packets being sent? For that, we'll start needing sequence numbers. So if you want to get ahead in the lectures, start thinking about what that protocol uh, might look like, and we'll go over that next time. All right, thank you guys.